Hello, everyone. Praise Yahweh or become the enemy's prey. In Isaiah 54, 1, it says, For more are the children of the desolate or emptied or spoiled. We were taken for a prey or spoiled as a prey. It's a play on words, of course, but it's a choice we make being taken or chosen in the furnace of affliction, Isaiah 48.10, primarily to overcome the enemy by discerning the Holy Spirit's voice from the voice of the enemy who wants to be like the Most High. The enemy would argue that being flesh, we're prone to selfishness and not godly love. The enemy would argue that we'd be inclined to adhere to the thoughts it places in our spirit versus what the Holy Spirit or Jesus places in our mind and spirit. Jesus is looking for us to lift him, lift him up in the wilderness, John 3, 14, even though we were chosen in the furnace of affliction, publishing affliction, Jeremiah 4.15. So that's what desolate is, emptied, spoiled, taken for a prey in Strong's 9.62. Uh, gather, catch for a prey, spoil, take, take away. Notice that the same root word is in and utterly, and spoiled, uh, that would be booze. And over here, emptied, same root word, 1238, shall be utterly. So we're uttering, witnessing, overcoming the en enemy by restating what the Holy Spirit places in our spirit, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, and having nothing to do with the flesh or the world. And it's by our deeds, not works, but our deeds would reflect accurately what our testimony really is. Uh, Jesus said, you know, I will judge them according to how your works shall be, but that's basically whether or not we kept the word of his patience or not, ultimately. Incredibly, and referring to 962 in Isaiah 24.3, uh, Psalm 119.89, all of the Hebrew letters add up to 962. Before we go to that scripture, however, in the Englishman's Hebrew Concordance of the Old Testament by Wygram, in Isaiah 24, 3, and utterly spoiled is in the infinitive. That's basically not binding it to a subject or past, present, or future tense either. So isn't it interesting that he notes that in being spoiled shall be. Again, however, we're called to overcome the enemy by testifying humbly and righteously and not becoming vain or prideful and arrogant in a world of vanity. Ecclesiastes 1-2, where the power of the wicked one uh, is throughout the whole world. Uh, 1 John 5, 19, for example, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. 
Here are all of the Hebrew letters that add to 962, spoil and utterly, in the Strong's 962, found in Psalm 119.89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That's the KJV. 89 happens to mean dream. 119 would uh, be a beginning, if you will. 119 on the Bible number meanings list, a little left off and stopped. So that would be taken for a spoil once more, wouldn't it? Emptied, made desolate. So discern between the Holy Spirit's voice and the enemy's voice. Praise Yahweh or become the enemy's prey. Psalm 22, 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And 2 Timothy 2.19, Jesus knows who are his, and let everyone who uses the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We're constantly being purified, but the Holy Spirit doesn't keep us on a narrow path. we got to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And it's our righteous and humble testimony, witnessing to the word of God, that we understand, we recount, we speak into existence because it's still a John 1-1 moment in time. We're God's counselor, unwittingly his counselor in most cases. See Isaiah 46, 10 and 11, even a bird sojourning as a Hebrew, where light should shine out of darkness, all the while God hiding himself from the house of Jacob and making darkness his secret place. Isaiah 8, 17 and Psalm 18, 11. And in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So you don't want to become the enemy's prey. So all of these letters in Psalm 119, 89, Forever, Lord, your word stands or is settled in heaven, are at Google Translate, as well as the reflection of every one of these words, except Yahweh, because it made for complications in translation. Suffice it to say that a reflection of Yahweh, uh, hey, vav, hey, yud, would be more like uh, that or us word. Check out the scriptures that mention us word in the Bible. So here they are at Google Translate in standard form. Hebrews read right to left. And I took each word and use the reflection of it. Uh, here I did have have to add a have meaning the, but didn't change much at all and kept Yahweh the same. It may seem odd to take a reflection of the word, but as unwitting witnesses where light is shining out of darkness, God said, let there be light. That's our battle with the enemy. That's the race that we're running. Working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, we're actually reflecting the character and sacrificial nature of Jesus Christ. All this while during a time of Jacob's trouble, ending the age because the judgment had to be written 
before the age could end. See Jeremiah 36 and 7, Isaiah 29, 22 through 24, and Psalm 149, 9. Incredibly, a reflection of Psalm 119.89 with Yahweh being left the same would be the one who is praised by the Lord or rather the one who praises the Lord is as a lily in the twilight of settlement. So your word is forever settled in heaven twilight would be at evening, a balancing of the law, a magnifying of the law. Isaiah 42, 19 through 21. Uh, I think it's Revelation 11, 1, where we had a, a uh, plumb bob in our hand measuring and witnessing at evening, or you might even say at, at midnight, or in the dark, or in blindness. But that would be twilight, where it's light to some, dark to others, and where some can fall away, not understanding the voice in their mind. Are they hearing from God, or are they now hearing from the enemy? A lot of people used to have words and dreams from Yahweh, but then the enemy gets his turn, if you will, and in these latest, last days, uh, within an even darker period of time, it would have one questioning whether or not they are hearing the right voice anymore. So that's the way I read the reflection of it. The one who praises the Lord is as a flower in the darkness at a time of settling God's word. By two or three witnesses, every word is established. Know you not that you'll judge angels, even the least of them in the church. 1 Corinthians 6, 13 and 14. And of course, the word's still being established. And it is a big deal, as lowly and broken as you feel. You don't want to be bitter or unforgiving. In fact, you want to repent and then count it all joy as we are being routinely sifted by the enemy and by anyone around you as one called to overcome a world of uh, lovelessness and, and darkness. You're a flower to God, uh, you, could, you could say. Lily, by the way, basically means lee, lee, lily. It means learn. Uh, you could say teach and learn. And lil, lily adds to 80. And that would be who, where on the Bible number meanings list as in a hidden one. See Psalm 83.3. So back at Isaiah 24.3, and utterly in Strong's 962, Wehibouz, these letters add to 26. 26 equals Yahweh, yud He. Vav, He, 10, 5, 6, and 5. Isn't that incredible? And all of these letters in Isaiah 24, 3 add to Damascus in Strong's 18, 34. So all these letters add to 1,834. 
a reflection of and utterly adding up to 26 would be has been paid. Or rather to say you're currently paying the price, sacrificing, counting it all joy while we lift up the Son of Man in the wilderness or Jesus and the Holy Spirit, John 3, 14. And the mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Galatians 3, 20. And the enemy wants to be like the Most High. Hear, O Jacob, or hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. It boils down to discerning the right voice and walking out your faith, listening to the right voice, reflecting the right voice, not the wrong voice. You want to make a covenant with God? See Job 41.4, and don't let the enemy prey on you. See Job 41.6, don't let the enemy make a banquet of you. Romans 6.16, know you not the voice that you hear is the voice that you obey. See John 3.15, and who by taking thought can add one cubit to their stature? That's Matthew 6.27 in the KJV. Jesus wants to add that cubit to your stature. He wants to make you a pillar in the temple, if you keep the word of his patience and not the devil's. See Revelation 3.12 and Revelation 3.10. So we're paying a price, being spoiled, stopped short, cut off, made desolate. But Jacob will see his children the work of God's hands. For more are the children of the desolate. See Isaiah 29, 23 and Isaiah 54, 1, where 541 is the gematria value of Israel. Yud, Shin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed, 10, 300, 200, 1, and 30. So it's important to understand Isaiah 54, 1 and the whole chapter, of course. By the way, and utterly or spoiled or taken for a prey is translated as and contempt at Google Translate. So we were found in contempt. We were going to be sifted by the enemy is the long and the short of it. And we want to count it all joy because we can rule and reign with Jesus Christ after all. And we are supposed to have godly love for the world and feel sorry for a world in darkness. As a matter of fact, Damascus means silent is the sackcloth weaver. So we're weeping we're weaving a garment. We're interwoven with Jesus. Uh, we're weaving a net to catch fish. Damascus is in between weeping, Dema in Strong's 1832. Uh, Damascus is 1834. And... Dan is a judge in Strong's 1835. So we are indeed judging. We're judging fallen angels, but we're judging the voice in our own mind. And that's even the abomination of desolation, the enemy trying to be like the Most High. That's basically pretending. He's pretending that he is God when he was once a covering cherub, I had a, an experience that lasted for a number of hours in 2014, wherein I saw within a public library a group of people 
who had dark circles under their eyes. And I knew in my spirit that the enemy is in all flesh. And that's why most of the world uh, is not born again. And for now, uh, just in the power of the wicked one until that end time revival and the elect bride is glorified and then gets to be sent out into the Lord's harvest. Once the judgment is written, see Matthew 9, 38. And then, of course, we'll do the greater works all by the power of Jesus, who all is already seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father. So isn't that incredible that Damascus is right next to Dan and Judge. And incredibly, 1834, as a number is concerned, in the middle of a Hebrew word or number is the focus. 83 would mean hidden. 14, if you put the one and the four together, means yod or hand or open hand, or praising hand. So the one that's hidden should be praising. Uh, what's the scripture say? It's our sacrifice to raise our hands in the air, a sacrifice to God to praise. Finally, in Aramaic, see the Aramaic New Testament by David Bousher, Jesus didn't come soon or quickly necessarily. He's with us in spirit. And just for the few chosen Jacobs are we to understand these things because Jesus has two flocks. John 10, 16, the ones that are in the world were even used by the enemy to oppose us. But as Jacob, we're supposed to understand that Jesus appeared to us like a thief in the night. And the enemy also came in like a flood, trying to confuse our mind. And this is a time of Jacob's trouble where we are writing the judgment. So Jesus came, not necessarily sooner or quickly, but he came Macda, a time of sharpening or magnifying the word. Macda. And this is cad or sharpen. See, cadad in Strong's 2300. So we established the law, Romans 331, and we are have the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And Jacob will teach his ways in the world to come, Isaiah 2, 3, and that should explain saviors in Obadiah 121. Jesus is coming at once. God bless everyone. Amen.